In the gold mines around Johannesburg, over 40 tons of gold disappear each year, stolen by workers who often answer to two bosses, the gold mines and the South African mafia. The figures are increasingly alarming. Estimates range between 6% and 10% of production that is stolen. The mafia uses the gold to launder billions in dirty money with the help of Swiss banks. What was created here was a vehicle for people in South Africa or anywhere else in the world to wash their money through the conduit of the gold going to Switzerland and then clean into a Swiss bank account. Prominent names in the world of Swiss banking, like UBS, are involved. The gold mafia in Johannesburg makes a double profit, first through the stolen gold and then through money laundering by means of currency swindles, drug dealing and other crimes. Despite solving a few cases, the police are gradually losing control. The miners' poverty is the catalyst. A lot of the people that actually work on day-to-day -day mine, mining of gold are very poor. They get very low salaries and any, anything to, 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 to help them um, better their lives. And gold is easy. I mean, if you take a half a teaspoonful of gold, you can, you can in, in, increase your salary by tenfold. Many of the tens of thousands of miners who labor 2,000 meters below ground are doing the dirty work in a chain of organized crime. Trains take the miners to their place of work five kilometers away. Slowly, the temperature rises to 52 degrees. Often the tunnels are only half a meter high. It's damp and water floods in all the time. people are frequently exposed to deafening levels of noise. Little has changed since apartheid was abolished. The workers are black and their bosses are white. The blacks live in hovels and the whites on the mine grounds on a spruce estate complete with golf course. The gold is embedded in the rock and can rarely be seen with the naked eye. It is often stolen in the form of sand, which is then smuggled out of the mine. Coming up to the surface, every other miner is frisked by the security guards, hoping to catch the thieves red-handed. Security checks like this seldom have the desired effect, since the miners warn each other beforehand. Due to the fact that uh, it's, it's available all over underground and it's uh, the market outside. And the problem is growing? Every day. Gold is also siphoned off around the rock mills. It's also taken as red that some of the security staff are being bribed by the mafia. The temptation is just too great. People that still know that they will, they will be buyers for their gold um, and that's probably the reason why it is stolen to, uh, to the extent that it is. The crude gold ends up in the hands of small middlemen in the townships around Johannesburg. As this police video shows, the gold is melted out of the rock in people's backyards using primitive methods. The poisonous fumes often prove lethal. The extracted gold then passes from the black slums to the gold mafia's white buyers in Johannesburg. The police secretly film this gold handover in a block of flats. The money used to pay the gold thieves also comes from drug dealing, often involving the Russian mafia. But how does organized crime manage to get the tons of stolen gold into Switzerland? In South Africa, only the National Bank may export gold. In the case of Chemfix, which the police solved after a five-year inquiry, seven tons of gold had been exported disguised as silver. It was uh, put into sealed containers, and the documentation was fraudulently uh, it stipulated that it was, in fact, uh, silver, because they painted the gold silver and they declare it on with customs and excise on the way bills and the export documentations, uh, documents 
they, they uh, declared it as silver. Officially, Swissair transported silver, not gold, into Switzerland. The transportation documents had also been forged. They clearly stated the goods were silver. In Switzerland, the recipient of the silver plate of gold was the UBS subsidiary Metalor in Nuremberg. Behind the gold's refinery closed doors, the silver was removed from the untreated pieces of South African gold. Then standard gold bars were prepared for the world market, the value of which was paid into the Mafia's Swiss bank accounts. The process had gone full circle. The dirty money had been cleaned. Were metal ore and the banks involved guilty of receiving stolen goods and money laundering? Had they broken Swiss law? UBS, the owner of metal ore, and according to police of the laundered money, sent us a fax claiming that those responsible at metal ore have always acted above board. Metal ore categorically refused an interview. They preferred to answer our questions in writing. The accusation on money laundering was refuted. May we remind you that the law against money laundering has only been in force since 1st of April 1998. We could therefore hardly obey laws which were unknown to us. When gold was delivered, camouflaged as silver, shouldn't that have aroused suspicion with the metal ore staff? And should they not in turn have informed the authorities? Metal ore's response. We were in no position to prevent the suppliers from tampering with the goods. These goods were imported and declared as gold. This declaration is false and clearly proven on the documents which state that the goods were silver. The Swiss authorities have been offering their help to the South African police with their law enforcement proceedings. It was clear that what was exported from South Africa was not what was received on the other side. The question is, did they knowingly participate? If they knew or sus suspected that this was dirty money and the whole operation was suspect, the answer is yes. Definitely, if the company uh, Metalaw was situated in South Africa, they would have faced serious charges against them. Metalaw has defended itself in the Federal Appeal Court against South African requests for law enforcement aid. Meanwhile, in South Africa's mines, gold is still disappearing down dubious channels.